My name is John Friedman. I'll be your instructor for today's class, uh, Hawaii Information Services, multiple listing services, free training. This class is an advanced class. Uh, it is the advanced searching class. Uh, my name is John Friedman, and I'll be your instructor for today. There's a picture of me and my business partner, Kristen Zimmerman, up there in the upper uh, left-hand corner. My uh, arrow color, I am going to change real quickly here. Let me just change the color. Let's go with green today. We'll use a bright green arrow, uh, make a little bit oh, make a little bit better sense for me. So up there in the upper left-hand corner, you should be able to see a picture of me and my business partner, Kristen Zimmerman. There are a couple of ways to get a hold of me during class. You can raise your hand. I will simply open up your microphone. If your microphone enabled and your microphone is on, on your laptop, PC, smart pad, iPhone, smartphone, or any other computer device, you should be able to just chat with me. Um, if you do not have your microphone enabled or your, your laptop or PC does not have a microphone, the best way to get a hold of me is to type a question into the question box. <clears throat> a quick note, if you type a question into the question box, I will also answer that question verbally, um, just as I do if you, um, if you um, raise your hand, I'll open your microphone, we'll just chit chat. Um, and then, hold on just one second, you guys. So I will, I will take that question verbally as well. Uh, I'll answer that question verbally, but I'll send you a quick TY for thank you or YW for your welcome. Um, you need not respond to that TY or YW. For those of you that took my beginning uh, search class this morning, uh, that was just an entree into some of the features that are available on this system. It is a super duper system. Uh, it is one of the most in-depth multiple listing service systems in the United States of America. Um, it was created um, as a proprietary software back in the early 80s um, and has continued to grow and change ever since. It is owned by two entities, uh, the Big Island Board of Realtors and the Kauai Board of Realtors. Um, so it is a member owned, um, uh, actually the board owned um, entity. Uh, we were the first public record based MLS system in the United States. Uh, now that is the standard for all MLSs. Um, and what that means is that we use the tax key information to fill in a lot of information. It's not just strictly listing built. Uh, enables you to look at all the past listings for a property. Um, as well as uh, all of the public record. The multiple listing service information comes from you, the listing agent. The public record information comes from a multitude of different public agencies, including the State of Hawaii Department of Commerce and Consumer Affairs, the State of Hawaii Bureau of Conveyances, the individual county, that being the Big Island and uh, Kauai County, um, um, uh, tax office, building offices, and planning departments. Uh, there's just a ton of information there. And so as we get into this advanced listing, we will be um, talking a great deal about uh, where the information comes from and what the most reliable information is. Quick look at the syllabus for today. Um, this is advanced searching. The prerequisite was this morning's class searching. For those of you that did not take that prerequisite, if you get a little bit uh, flustered or back or behind um, and you don't really know what to do, simply raise your hand or you know type a question in the question box. Do not hesitate to tell me to slow down or that you need to be um, uh, go over something again. I move very, very quickly, particularly in this class, and so um, we will uh, go through a number of things. This webinar is an advanced class. We're going to talk about Boolean indicators, sometimes referred to as Boolean logic. We'll talk about some very specific Boolean indicators, the wild card, um, as well as uh, only, not, or, and, or two fields down here. We're going to talk about the add fields button. The add fields button used to be called the all fields button. It was actually a little bit more uh, apropos, uh, appropriately named field, when it was the All Fields button, uh, because the Add Fields button really gives you access to the over 630 fields that can be utilized both in formats or in um, and search parameters, in this case, for um, creation. We're going to talk a great deal about the wildcard or the Shift-8 key, the asterisk sign. Um, we'll talk about how to liberally use that. 
uh, and we'll talk about some uh, good examples. In this case, they're looking at ADU and REO. Uh, these are actually two examples of some of the hardest to search um, fields, uh, and I'll tell you why when we get there. We've got um, how to use them as a combination, and also we'll talk about some very, very big differences uh, in uh, things like last sale date, very last sale date, and each sale date, as well as oceanfront, oceanfront parcel, and ocean view. We're then going to move into some kind of basic farming things. We're going to talk about foreign ownership, out-of-state ownership, uh, searching by total exemption amounts, searching by assessed value, um, and then we'll move into some suggested remarks field. Uh, spent a lot of time in the remarks field uh, looking at some uh, special places where you can uh, look at best ways to find or farm for uh, those things that are most important to you. In the end of today's class, we're going to use a, uh, a, a case scenario. I did miss something, I realized, in this morning's class. I apologize, but that was saving a search. I'll talk to you a little bit about how to save that search today. I apologize to those folks that were in this morning's class and did not return. Um, to this afternoon's class because that wasn't enough supposed to teach in this morning's class, but uh, such is life and uh, we'll keep on going here. So that's about it. Um, I hope that um, all of this information is uh, uh, good for you. Please remember that there's a limited class size today. I've got one, two, three, four, five. Is that how many of you guys I got? I got one, two, three, four. <coughs> I got five of you here. That's pretty small. Um, so if you guys have specific questions, um, I do ask my students, please, if a student asks you a question about, you know, how do I search for oceanfront property on the you know, certain side of the street in Kona, um, you know, or, you know, property that's on a certain side of the street, and I show, show you that search, please don't go and use that person's farm for yourself. Um, you know, be um, respectful of their uh, thinking outside of the box and doing that. Biggest out-of-the-box suggestion that I can give you guys today, particularly when we go to farming, is remember that we handle the multiple listing service for Kauai and the Big Island, but we also keep a compilation of the entire public record for the state. It's very important. We, we manage the public record for the entire state, but we manage the multiple listing service only for the Big Island and Kauai. Okay, I mentioned raising your hand or typing a question in the question box uh, during class. Um, however, after class, you can also reach me. Uh, most easily accessible via my email address. Uh, that address is Emma's and Mary, K is in kangaroo, R is in Romeo, at mykawairealty.com. Caveat to that email address, it is shared with my business partner, Kristen Zimmerman. Please put something in the subject line or in the body of the email that says this is a question about the MLS system. This is a question about advanced searching. Uh, so that if you just say, please call me, there's a possibility Kristen will give you a call. And after a half an hour of figuring out that you're a student and not a client or customer, um, uh, she'll refer it back to me. <laughs> so uh, please put something in the subject line so that I can uh, look at that. I answer emails generally within 24 hours, but if for any reason I have not answered your email within 24 hours, please change or append your subject line to include the word urgent or second request. Um, occasionally, um, uh, emails from my clients go into my spam filter like that one should have, um, and um, um, I don't see them. However, if you put urgent or second request in there, I do clear my spam filter um, daily, if possible, and I always check before I clear it for that subject line, urgent or second request. Also, you can always call me if you need help immediately, 808-651-1276. However, important to note, the number you should always call first when uh, looking at um, um, issues surrounding the system or for information for, for um, <clears throat> uh, technical support is the technical support hotline on Oahu. That number is 1-800-628-3121. When prompted, push the numeral 1 for technical support or the numeral 2 if uh, you're looking for advertising opportunities on our public-facing sister site, alohaliving.com. For those of you that have taken my classes before, you know that I do like to start each day with uh, uh, kind of some quick tips of the day. Today we're going to look at the Revo page or the home page, the Real Estate Virtual Office, Real Estate Virtual Organizer homepage, sometimes referred to as the dashboard. Um, 
and talk about some of the advanced search techniques that are available here. Uh, let's say you're driving by 5760 Howiki Road, happens to belong to a friend of mine, Rod Allfield. It looks like the house is uh, vacant, and you're like, man, I wonder what's going on with that house. I'd love to list that house. Um, you can type into this uh, shortcut bar on your home page here uh, the address, 5760 B Howiki Road. And so what I'm going to do here is I just want to note, uh, first of all, those of you that took this morning's class, I always type everything in lowercase letters. Um, it's more advantageous. Um, also, when you're searching for an address, <clears throat> you need not put the suffix. You don't need to put road, court. As a matter of fact, you should not put the suffix road, court, avenue, highway, way, avenue. So in this case, I'm just going to put 5760. I also leave off any reference to condominium numbers, uh, especially in our state of uh, horizontal property regimes. Uh, the, this particular property, um, 576B Howiki Road. I lived there for a long time. Uh, Rod and Susan Allfield, good friends of mine. Um, and I'm not putting the B here. And that's because there's an A, also owned by Rod and Susan. But I just want to put that 5760 Howiki Road. Once I click that, here we can find the tax key, 4476. We see it's owned by Rod Allfield. Right? And the last sale of this property occurred on July the 15th, 1993. If I need to get a hold of Rod, uh, if I just drove by this house, how do I get a hold of this owner? I simply click on the tax key number and up will pop all of his information. I can write Rod at Post Office Box 5, Burr Hill, Virginia, right, 22433, okay? So a lot of great information readily available. Sketch there of the, of the property, a list of the uh, residential building additions. Quick note about building information um, as we get towards the bottom here. Notice the building permits do not come from the building department. They come from real property tax department, okay? So a completed permit, okay, does not necessarily mean that they got an owner, a, a certificate of occupancy, okay? That's you as a realtor are responsible for checking and make sure the building permits have been closed out. Uh, the tax department says, hey, there's toys in the driveway, the property's complete, and they start taxing you for your finished dwelling, even if you have not received your um, certificate of occupancy. Um, the tax department doesn't care whether or not you receive your certificate of occupancy. They're going to bill you on the current use of the property. Uh, we see that in Kauai. Oftentimes we'll see uh, that uh, property is pit coded as a transient vacation rental. Don't think that that means it's a legal vacation rental. That means that's the way the people are using it, whether it's legal or illegal, and they're being taxed accordingly. Okay, so lots of good information on that. Let's go back to where we were. In addition, within the quick, these are all my quick tips for the day. In addition to the quick search bar, you can you look up property owners. Maybe um, maybe you ran into a 007 Pierce Brosnan, uh, step on his foot inside the Honolulu Big Save. He says, oh, what do you do for a living? I'm a realtor. You know, I've been thinking about selling my property. Can you send me a letter? And you are so starstruck that you forget to ask him for his address, all right? So you go ahead, you put in the name of the owner there, Brosnan, simply click on it. Here you find Pierce and Kelly Brosnan. They own two pieces of property in the Wainiha Delta. I simply go up and uh, pop on the tax key number. And lo and behold, here we've got uh, Pierce Brosnan, care of Grant, Tony, Barash, and Altman, <coughs> excuse me, Barash and Altman uh, in Beverly Hills, California. Okay? That's how you would get a hold of 007. Right? Uh, you could also um, take a look here. I'm going to show you another one. I do pick on friends and celebrities, by the way. Um, maybe you have somebody who's looking to lease some of Bette Midler's uh, pasture land. Uh, you need to find Bette Midler. You type in Midler, and you click this. And the first thing that we'll note right off the bat is that most of this property that pops up is owned by Bette Midler. She owns quite a bit of property here on the island of Kauai. But way down at the bottom there, Island 1, Division 1, on Oahu, right, on Oahu Avenue, there is a Daniel Midler. Is Daniel Midler related to Bet? I have no clue, okay? With that said, if you want to eliminate Daniel Midler from this search, you simply close this and use that asterisk sign that we talked about earlier, the wild card Boolean indicator, the Shift 8 key, okay? I'm make sure I got the shift A key, put in the asset, and then put a B, okay? Now when I search, 
Daniel Midler has surprisingly removed himself from the equation. He's no longer there. And of course, I can go in and look at any one of these properties to find out how to get a hold of Bette Midler. In this case, a 355.93 acre plot, one of her smaller parcels here on the island of Kauai. And if I want to get a hold of Bette, I write to the Bette Midler Family Trust, care of Sussman and Associates, Attention Luann, in Nashville, Tennessee. Before Bette Midler was a movie star, she was a rock and roller, southern country rock and roller, with her roots in Nashville, Tennessee. Although she was raised on Oahu, um, her, her uh, first foray into being famous was through her music, and her agent, whether Sussman & Associates is an acting agency, a CPA, or an attorney, I don't know, but um, they are um, located in Nashville, Tennessee. Okay, and that's how you would get a hold of her. Going back to our homepage here, uh, last but not least, do make sure that you check your own personal name in here. Uh, search yourself out. Everybody with the name last name Friedman who's licensed on, uh, or that's currently active with the MLS on Choir of the Big Island is here. I know Jamie never met uh, Dennis. But, you know, just click on yourself, guys. Make sure all your information is correct. If your information is not correct, if, if there's any, I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice. If your information is not correct, if there's nothing in here that makes sense, let me know. For those of you that did not take this morning's class, I did go into how to uh, uh, post your blog, your Facebook, your LinkedIn, your Twitter accounts. Um, all of that is uh, achieved by going. All of that is achieved by going through your profile. Simply click on your own photo, click on my profile, and over on the internet column. There's a lot of uh, social networking sites that you can put in there. Uh, rapidly working, I'm putting some more uh, currently active um, internet contact methods in here. I mean, along with uh, the blog, Delicious has gone the way of the dinosaur. It's no longer in existence. It is extinct. But we uh, have MySpace there. I'm not sure if anybody maintains a MySpace uh, page anymore. Uh, we, there is a Tumblr account, a Twitter account, but it is absent Pinterest. Um, and some other of our newer um, uh, social networking sites. So I do encourage you all to, to enter as much information as you can into here. And as I said this morning, the most important thing you can do is put your own personal internet contact information into um, that internet contact area. Without it, uh, many of our strategic partners, 31 in total, including Trulia Zillow, or over 30, uh, including Trulia Zillow, uh, Realtor.com, AlohaLiving.com and many others, uh, get their information about you from that line. And if you don't fill it out, then they're likely to go to somebody else. That's kind of my quick tips for the day. Any questions so far, guys? Okay, not hearing any questions, not seeing anything pop up on my on my bar here. I do want to take you into um, a, a new area here. Um, we talk about advanced searching. Let's take a quick look at the syllabus. Oh, we went through that syllabus pretty good. I'm just going to go ahead and fly on in here. My favorite class to teach, by the way, you guys. So the entire class is taught from search for listings. Today I'll utilize the quick search tab uh, to, uh, to, to look at these. So let's talk briefly about <clears throat> advanced searches. My favorite client, D.B. Bucks, yours too, Daddy Big Bucks, comes in and he says, listen, I'm looking for some horse land. Uh, uh, my wife loves horses. I've got to have at least three acres, okay? Um, I really could care less if there was a shack on the place, but my wife is very, very particular about the type of home she has. She hates square and rectangular homes. Um, she has to have a hip roof. And she wants cedar shakes, okay? So you get really active, oh, and, and we want to be on the island of Kauai. So you, you go, okay, we're on the island of Kauai. You put in the four there. You look for active residential property, right? You look for the land down here, and you say, okay, I want three acres, three AC, right? right? And then you say, wow. Now, do you search all that property out, which would be, by the way, 53 listings? and look to see if they have hip roofs and cedar shakes? Well, you could, right? But there's probably some better ways to do that, okay? One of the things that you can do is you can go in and go to the Add Fields tab located right over here. 
As I mentioned earlier in this morning's class, it used to be called the All Fields tab, much more appropriately named, contains all 630 plus fields. I'm simply going to click on this tab to pop up my Add Fields categories. These can be further <coughs> disaggregated. I'm sorry, my voice is going, you guys. I apologize. I sound like a 13-year-old boy. <clears throat> Hold on just one second, please. I'm going to mute the mic for a second while I clear my throat. Okay, I hope you guys can hear me. I'm going to try and talk a little bit softer here and see if that helps. I've, um, you can further disaggregate all of this information. This information is listed uh, symbols first, followed by numbers, followed by A to Z. Okay, lots and lots of information. There's also a shortcut bar located down in the lower left-hand field. You can also further disaggregate information by clicking the expansion button and searching by specific categories. If you're just looking for loan data, unclick everything else, and then all you will get was the loan data. Maybe you're looking for you know, a piece of property that uh, there's a PMM on or a purchase money mortgage financed by the seller because your client doesn't have a lot of cash and you're hoping that because he's got such a great income, the holder of the current note might sell uh, or might uh, be willing to finance your client as well. That client also might like the monthly income better than being paid off all at once. So all of these little disaggregation points are there and we'll leave them all filled up um, so that we can look at everything here uh, as we move forward. Okay, so back to our search. We need a building, right, that the shape, building shape, is not rectangular or square. Okay, now I could say, okay, I want an L-shaped building, a U-shaped building, or an irregularly shaped building, but that's not really what my client asked for. My client said, I want a building that is not rectangular and not square. Okay? Once I've entered that information, I do need to go up and click the check mark box up here to make sure that it takes and also, they had some very specific roof requirements. So I'm going to just put in roof here. Okay. By the way, how do you find out what all of these fields are? Hover help, right? Just simply put the hand over it until it tells you what it is. Right? Roof design is it a flat gable hip, etc. Roof material, right? Is it asphalt, glass, baked enamel, corrugated iron? Right. So let's start with the roof design. Daddy Big Buck's wife, Mary Bucks. Oh, sorry, I have a very bad sense of humor. <laughs> My daughter always says, bad humor, dad, bad humor. Okay, but roof design, very specific. She wants a hip roof. Okay, I'm gonna put a hip roof here, right? And roof material. Oh, by the way, you can see when there's roof design or MLS information, um, where there's public record information or MLS information, I always opt for the public record data, always. Never opt for the MLS. Why is that? Well, excuse my language here, but quite frankly, my peers suck at putting information in. As bad as we malign the county of Hawaii and the county of Kauai, the people who work for them do a much better job of filling in information than do listing agents. Okay? It also underscores the importance of you as an agent putting the correct information into your listing. Take the time to fill listings out properly. Okay, so here I'm going to go into roof design. Oh, do we already do that? Yeah, we already said hip roof. That's perfect. Check that. Roof material, right? I'm going to go in on, once again, I'm using the green one, the public record data. And then I'm going to say she wants shakes. She doesn't want shingles. She wants cedar shakes. So I'm going to put shakes in there. And I'm going to hit the check mark. Okay. Now, when I look down below, I see, hey, I'm looking in tax key four for active property that's residential, has at least three acres of land, take care of his horses, and the dwelling building shape is not a rectangle and not square, and the dwelling roof design is hip, and the dwelling roof material is shakes. Okay, Let's take a look. We'll take a quick count to make sure we have matches. Of course, I should...
Plus, which is the correct format to be in since I'm looking for active property. Okay. See if I can close this up. Okay. And the dwelling roof material is shakes. I've checked my format. I'm correct. Let's go ahead and count. We've got 12 matching listings. Let's take a quick search here and see what we've got. So where does the information come from? Huh? This is a very, very interesting question. Right. Let's take a look at this first one. Neil Norman, come on in here. Take a look at Neil's photos here. First thing that I notice, although this is what we would call a modified hip roof, modified gable or modified hip roof, this is definitely a hip roof here. And just looking at it, I can guarantee you that those are cedar shakes. Okay, $21.5 million listing price. I'd love to sell this to my client. Okay, I would absolutely love to sell this to them. Okay, and because Daddy Big Bucks has a good, good amount of taste, this may be just what he's looking for in terms of a property. This does come as part of a business, and I'd have to ask him, hey, listen, there's a business here uh, as well as a, as a structure. There's a, exactly 44.64 acres, 5,780 square feet of living area. Below that, we've got one on the other side of the island, Brideswood Ranch, 272 acres. Let's take a look at Rod Easterly's um, photos here. And boom, lo and behold, by the way, double-click photos to make them larger, right? Uh, lo and behold, this is definitely a hip roof. In fact, that's a Hawaiian hip roof, a split-pitch hip roof right? with cedar shakes, okay? Built in 1860, beautiful old stone home, canic ceilings. Ooh, look at that. I have to call Rod. I've got Koenig. <laughs> Hard to find anymore. Give me a call because it's very rare to find out. Koenig is a byproduct of sugar, um, sugar cane industry. Um, it's a drywall-like substance or used like drywall. It's actually not drywall-like at all. It has no gypsum in it. It's the fibrous portion of the sugar cane um, chopped up and made into these boards. Um, once they get wet, they get damaged. I was just noticing in this picture up here or somewhere that there was damage to the roof over in here from moisture. Right? And I happen to have access to some canic, so that's why I was bringing it up. This is a beautiful property here. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, right? And it fulfills our criteria here. Okay? So where does the information come from? Well, the information comes off the public records, guys. Anything that you can find on the public record can be searched for, right? So you can search by owner's names, or you can search by taxpayer names, or you can search by tax bills, or you can search by PIP codes, uh, which is a tax classification code. Highest, it used to be a highest and best use code. Both County of Kauai and the Big Island are now using that as a tax classification code rather than the highest and best use code, which is very important. Um, you can also search by a project name. You can search by uh, the year built. You can search by the percent complete. You can search by style of home, shape of home, structure of home, roof material, roof design, foundation, whether it has central AC or heat, basement, ceiling, which this says plasterboard, not quite accurate, um, occupancy. Right, framing, right, exterior wall, wall construction, single or double, interior wall, flooring, right, all of these are searchable fields, okay. So this is where that information comes from. Is it ever wrong? Sure it is, right. Here we're looking at an exterior wall that says stucco. Um, this home, which was built, let's see if we can see that you're built. This was built in 2008, maybe that is a stucco home, okay. When it pulls information, oh, this is Neil Norman's one. I was actually going to look at the McBrideswood one. Let me go back here. Let's look at this one, a better, better example here. When you look at multiple buildings, notice that this property shows two buildings, okay? The downside to using this system is it's going to pull information off the first building. So in this case, we're looking at shakes, we're looking at hip, right? We're looking at the framing is masonry, and the exterior wall is stone or rock, okay? You also have the year built, 
if you have somebody looking for an old plantation home or something like that, they want it built before 1900, you could put, right, before 1900 as a search. Okay? Effective year built, very, very misunderstood term. Does this mean the home looks like it was built in 1959 even though it was born, built in 1860? No. The effective year built is the last fall of the hammer on a legally obtained building permit. The last fall of a hammer on a legally obtained building permit. So if they added a hot water heater closet in 1959 and they went and got a permit for it because it's on the outside of the building and they put a hot water heater in there, that's why this shows 1959. I, in reality, don't know what was done in 1959, but that's what we would be looking at. Okay, so if we look at the second home, we might see that this is a rectangular in shape, does not meet our criteria. Everything else does. The roof material is corrugated iron. We're looking for shakes, right? So the second home doesn't really meet our criteria, and this is where you have a problem. Sometimes you'll have a second home that does meet your criteria, and the first uh, dwelling does not, and unfortunately, we will still miss that one. However, this really is a shortcut to getting more effective searches. Continue down a little bit further, Donna Rice, to recover. Ooh, look at all the Neil Norman listings. Well, let's take a look at it. Here's John Ferry's. Might as well look at the expensive stuff just to, to get up for what's per purchasable. Ben Stiller's house, by the way. Yes. Um, as you look at this, uh, you'll see this beautiful home, uh, aerial view, Kilauea Lighthouse. In the background, you have the meandering driveway, beautiful home, hip roof, right? You want to live in a beautiful place, here you go, $31 million, exterior elevation. Etc. Uh, by the way, for those of you guys on the Big On, if you know somebody interested in this home, send them on over. I'll give you a 35% referral. <laughs> Much higher than usual at $31 million price. Okay. Uh, a beautiful, beautiful uh, piece of property. Okay. So just a quick example of some of those searches. Okay. So here we've looked at all of this information. Okay. And these are some possibilities for my client, Daddy Big Bucks. For those of you that have taken some of my more basic searching classes, I didn't mention this this morning, but anywhere in our system where you have a heading or a subheading with a line under it, you can sort the entire page by that. If you want to sort by price, you click once to go from least expensive to most expensive, or you click twice to go from most expensive to least expensive. Okay. In this case, I'm going to go from least expensive to most expensive. As I get in there, um, here we see Donna Rice is 1.275, 4.38 acres. Right. If you want to take a look at this home, here we see a home probably listed by the um, by the um, county as irregular in shape. Right, we get a good idea of uh, what this property looks like. What happened there? Get a good idea of what this property looks like. Right, and a great um, chance to sell a property uh, that might fit. <laughs> my client's needs at 1.275, room for horses, etc. Okay. Lots and lots of other searches that you can do. I want to talk a little bit about the wild card real briefly here. Okay. Um, let's go back to search here. So let's say we take those 12 listings to our client. When we get back to, our, to uh, show them all those listings, none of them light as fire. There's other ways to look. Maybe I want to look at active residential properties. I'm going to go to my Add Fields tab. Now, it's a little hard to do, but if you'll see over here, you can toggle back and forth between fields. If you look at the taxi, I'm going to look in Kauai. But if I add that to the Add Fields tab, I'm going to go in. I'm just going to write Taxi here. All right. Notice I can pick from the MLS data or from the public record data. Remember, I always go with the public record data. It's more accurate. When I type this 4 in here, it will autofill the 4 in the tax key on the other one. Let's look at that again. There's nothing there, right? 
I'm going to add fields. I'm going to go to tax key. I'm going to click on my blue tax key. I'm going to put a four in here. I'm going to click the check mark. Right? Looking for Kauai. When I close this, that four has automatically been put up in here. Okay, so you can toggle back and forth between these fields. Now I'm looking for active residential property in tax key four, but this time I'm going to add a field called remarks. There are two different remarks fields. Right? Here you see public and private remarks. Right? So here I'm going to go into public remarks. These are um, customer or client remarks. And I'm going to use the asterisk sign, the shift 8 key. I'm going to put the word horse. And then I'm going to use the asterisk sign again. Let's talk about these asterisks real quick. This is a Boolean indicator. Okay? Boolean logic. It's basically some coding work that you're doing, even as a realtor. Okay? So here we've got the first asterisk means that the word horse does not have to be the first word in the MLS remarks. If you take that asterisk out, only the first word will be, the first word would have to be horse. Okay. The second asterisk okay, says that the word horse is, or horseback, or horseshoe, right, uh, would all be acceptable words. Okay. So this allows the first asterisk, that horse does not have to be the first word. The second asterisk means that it does not um, have to be the word horse, but it could be the word horses or horseback. Okay. Now I'm going to click the check mark here. Okay. Once I've done that, I can go ahead and close this field. Let's look at our recap bar real quick. I've removed my request for acreage. Okay. I'm still looking in tax key 4. I'm in the public remarks working for the word horse. I am looking for a residential property, not a condominium, and I'm looking for actively listed property. Okay. Let's go ahead and see what we have. I'm going to go ahead and check my format, make sure I'm in the MLS. I am. Okay. And now I'm going to go in and count. This is all from this morning's class, right? Eight listings, that four-part system. Okay. Remember that four-part system? That's... Um, Step number one, enter your search parameters, what it is you're looking for. That's anything within these uh, large area of white here that I just highlighted. Anything within any of the white area, uh, including the add fields tab, um, is a search parameter, what it is you're looking for. Step number two, check your format to make sure you're in the right format. I'll go in and show you a quick example of how easy it is to be in the wrong format. Okay, uh, and I'll do that after we do this example. And then step number three is count to make sure you have matches. Uh, I just did that. I clicked that count button. I have eight matching listings. You can see that over on the lower left-hand corner. Once my thing toggles off, there are eight listings that match. Right? Okay. And then the last step, of course, is click the search now button. Now you notice as we look at this, this actually pull up a whole different list. Okay. So we definitely want to see what this is. By the way, once again, underscores the importance of using thoughtful writing when you write your stuff. I'm looking for somebody who's got big bucks, daddy big bucks. You know what I mean? He could be a buyer for your property if he knew it would accept horses. right? But you didn't put that it might make good horse property in your listing. right? Might be 2.75 acres, and that's why I missed it with the three acres or more. Right? Might be 1.55 acres, like this property is here. Right? So we want to make sure that we know exactly what's happening here. Let's go in and take a look at the MLS. Remember, in the public remarks, we're looking for the word horse. Right down here. There's almost an acre of six foot chain link fence in an area to make it perfect for dogs horse or other livestock. Okay. Hey, this has already got an acre fenced off, 6447 Kahuna Road. Okay. Maybe it would be something that would interest my client. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Once again, we're looking in the public record. Ooh, I missed it. I got to read it again.
raise horses, other farm animals, fruit, vegetables, tropical flowers, and more. Okay? It's 1.2 level acres. Hey, Daddy, I know it's a little small for you, but I found a great property for 927000 I don't know if that's, you know, uh, if it's going to be the quality of home that you're looking for. Let me send you some photos. Let me send you some information. Uh, there is 1.25 acres of uh, land that you could put horses. Right? It is not a hip roof. It's a gable roof, a modified shed roof. Right? Might not be what he's looking for, but if we're just strictly looking for horse property, there it is. Okay? Uh, over here, Waipaki property, Kapuna Road, 5.79 acres, uh, sizable house of 2,729 square feet. Right? Let's go ahead and take a look at this property. Boom, here you've got Kapuna Road property, nice big piece of property, right? And as we look at it, maybe this would be what um, our client is looking for. Look at that TR6 right there. I'm a car freak, you guys. That's a beautiful car right there. Sorry. <laughs> I might call them and see if the car is for sale. Okay, so there you go. You got all that uh, information right there. Okay. okay. Go down a little bit farther. One more here. This is also on Kapuna Road. Let's take a look here. The home has a separate agricultural building, horse pasture, and retains the rights for a guest home. Okay. So now we know that this home actually has a horse pasture. Okay. So this might be something that lights Daddy Big Bucks and his wife Mary Bucks. I might light their fire. And what do you think of this place? Would you be interested in purchasing it? Right. So some nice photos for them to take a look at. Right, uh, if it lights their fire, um, it is a ceramic tile roof. I happen to know this home pretty well. Um, it is not a cedar shake roof, but maybe the wife says, ah, I don't mind ceramic tile, I just don't want asphalt shingles. Right? So there's all that information readily available. There are a lot of things you can search. I want to clear all this out here. I want to talk about Boolean indicators a little bit. This morning's class, I mentioned that. Oftentimes, somebody will come up and say, look, I'm looking for a, a piece of land on a bluff between uh, uh, on the north shore of Kauai. And, and then you call back the next week and you say, oh, I, you know, I found that property uh, in, near License Beach. Um, somebody else told me about it. You didn't tell me about it, so I used them to purchase the property. Um, the reason for that is that I consider 4-4-8 and 4-4-9 does really be on the North Shore of Kauai, or at least on the gateway to the North Shore of Kauai. But many people would have just searched 4-5 to be on the North Shore of Kauai. If you want to do large searches, somebody says, hey, I'm looking for a property between um, Lahui and the North Shore uh, with, um, with lots of acreage um, over over 10 acres, you can simply say 4-3, 2, 4-3, 9, all right, it's supposed to be an O and not a, all right, and then from, you'll see it automatically goes in there from 4-3 to 4-5-9, active, residential, all right, out of field, let's add land area, minimum land area, 10 AC, check, all right, and now I can look in this entire area for a parcel with at least 10 acres of land and a house. We'll count, I've got five listings that match, I can search those out, and here we see all of these big properties here, let's sort these by price. Starting at three and a half million, right? Um, modern estate on Kalihi White Ridge, right on down to 29 and a half million. Okay, so all this information is readily available um, and uh, quickly there. Let's talk about some other things that people like to search. Uh, let's look at this one again 4 3 to 4 5 9. I search this. And Daddy says, you know, I like these properties, but I'm not interested in, um, in Kalihiwai Ridge. 
okay? Not interested in Kalihi Wairich, okay? So what do I do about that if I'm not interested in Kalihi Wairich? Well, what I do is I go up and I simply say, okay, you're not interested in Kalihi Wairich, so how are we going to um, uh, remove Kalihi Wairich? Well, I'm going to take a look at this tax key here, all right? I'm simply going to copy this entire tax key here. And then I'm going to go back. I want you to note this is the $3.5 million listing here. I'm going to modify this. I'm going to say from 4-325-9 and not And then I'm going to use this Kalihi Y Rich tax key. I'm going to remove the parcel in its entirety. Okay, four three two four five nine and not four five two twenty two twenty two. Right, that's removing the entire plot. Okay, one two three four. No, let's go back. Now we're removing the Z island zone section plot. Okay, so I'm removing that entire twenty two plot there. Okay. And now when I search, if I count, you'll notice I lost a listing, went from five to four. But if I search, we'll notice that the three and a half million dollar listing is now gone. Okay? So you can eliminate those listings. By the way, this underscores what I said earlier today. I always keep my search recap at the top. The only time I ever remove it is if I'm doing a big printed presentation for somebody and I have 14 listings and 13 fall on page one and the 14th one is kicked onto page two, then I might remove the search criteria just so I can get everything on one page. But for the most part, I like my clients to know what they're looking at. So now we've, we've eliminated Kalihiwai Ridge and we're looking at uh, some stuff on Kahili Makai, some stuff on Kuaba, some stuff on Waikalua, and some stuff on Kaupea. Okay, so able to very quickly and easily remove some of those things. How do you get good at advanced searching? You practice, 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 you make up clients. Okay? Just like I made up DB Bucks, Daddy Big Bucks, and his wife Mary. You can make up clients and say, okay, what am I looking for? Okay? Maybe somebody comes up to you and says, look, I don't care where the heck on the island I am, I just want to be an oceanfront parcel. Okay? Let's talk a little bit about the difference between oceanfront and oceanfront parcel. I don't know how many, can I get those of you that are from Kauai to raise your hand? How many of you are from Kauai? Dana's from Kauai, are you the only one, Dana? Okay, because we got a big problem in Kauai. We have a walk-jog path. <laughs> it's a real attribute, but it causes a little bit of a problem because the definition of oceanfront is a property that touches the ocean, right? That's the definition of an oceanfront parcel, okay? That means is Pono Kai an oceanfront parcel? No. Is um, Lainani, or oh, Lainani would be, um, is um, Kahalani an oceanfront parcel? No. Those properties are on the ocean. There's no reason anybody would think they're not oceanfront. Oh, that's right, there's a strip of land called the county walk-jog path that separates that property from the ocean. So even though it's just a sidewalk, the property doesn't touch the ocean. So that's the only thing I'd like to remind you of. An oceanfront parcel, like at Kiahuna, well, let's just take a look over here. We'll just do it. I'll show you a quick one. Let's clear this. We'll look on the island of Kauai 4, okay? I'll look for active property. And you'll see down here, there is a thing that says oceanfront parcel, not an oceanfront parcel. I'm going to check that. If you're going to find that through the Adfields tab, you just write the word ocean, right? Remember, when you guys have time, just hover help through all these. Right? What's an oceanfront unit? Search for units that are on the oceanfront, right? So for condos, it must be in a project that's on the oceanfront. So here I'm going to say, okay, oceanfront parcel, uh, property data, I'm going to say, yeah, I want an oceanfront parcel, okay? 
So that's how I do that um, from the all field from the add fields tab. But I can also just do it from right down here. I already checked it, but oh, where'd it go? Right here. Ocean from parcel. Okay. So you know, that's TMK. That's, uh, I use MLS there. Okay. So you, so I use the MLS here. Um, so now when I count how many oceanfront parcels are currently active on the island of Kauai, I've got a hundred listings. Holy Mac. Why would I have so many? Well, the reason for that is there's going to be a lot of condos, right? they are going to be oceanfront parcels. Let's modify this. That's too big of a search. I'm going to modify this. Um, oh, that's all right. We'll search it. That wasn't that slow. Anytime you have a heading or a subheading with a line under it, you can sort by that heading or subheading. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and sort by location. Okay. Let's see what we've got. Here we've got a 4-2 area, uh, very far south shore, 1.299 million oceanfront property. Let's take a look at it. Whaler's Cove, beautiful location in Poipu. Kauai Beach Resort, Kauai Beachfront Home, fronting a swimming cove. Michael Schmidt, 4.95 million. Nice listing, Michael. Let's take a look at the. Here we've got Anchorage Point, front stunning swimming cove. Okay, this looks like it's a meaning, but I'd have to look at it a little bit closer. Okay, so ocean colors everywhere. Nice little beach cottage, 4.95 million. Let's go back here. I'm going to try and get this, by the way, this is an error you don't want to make. Oh, I just saw it. Where was that? Misspell a poipu. Right here. Poipo, oceanfront. I got to call Heidi. She's one of my favorite agents. I know that's a mistake. She didn't mean to do that. By the way, this, this field, the online display field, is what people see on all our strategic partners' websites. You want to make sure that's correct, okay? So this one, ah, sorry, my, my, my mouse has a mind of its own this morning. Hold on a second. Let's see if I can get this to. I'm going to pick on Heidi if I can find her. Okay, she meant to say Poipu Oceanfront. Um, by the way, when you want to tell somebody, all right, so here's this property on the Y Road. This is Poipu, beautiful freaking preacher property. Uh, you go from the MLS directly, it will automatically fill this in. So here this is MLS 60149. Uh, that's an indication that that's coming from another agent. Okay, if it says inquiry on MLS 601049, that's coming from a member of the public. You want to be sure you answer those, right? So you say, uh, Aloha Heidi, right? Okay, you know, nothing wrong with letting your, um, without letting your clients know, okay? Okay, so once you do that, you can just send it, show read that, and send me something back, okay? So, um, you know, there you go. Uh, help your, help your, you know, your, your fellow friends out when, when, there's an, when there's an issue, okay? She got it right here. She just misspelt it on the online display, Okay. okay. Great, great piece of property, great listing, great price. It's a beautiful piece of property. Okay, it's a nice listing. Okay. Look, here's this uh, right away, copied me. Okay. 
So, okay, let's talk about some other things you can do. Does anybody know any greedy realtors? No greedy realtors out there? Are you guys kidding me? Oh, nobody's raising their hand? <laughs> I'm going to put the out of the Kauai. I'm going to look for active and contingent property. I'm, I'm looking for contingents for a reason here, okay? But now I'm going to add a field. This time I'm going to use a whole different field. I'm going to put it in the remarks field. Remarks. You guys with me so far? Huh? Look at in the private remarks, not the public remarks. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to liberally use that asterisk sign, right? Asterisk bonus asterisk. Right? I want to see where it says anything about a bonus. By the way, on the Big Island, you guys are going to have some fun ones because um, I see a lot of Oh, this property comes complete with a bonus room, but that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for bonuses paid to the buyer's agent or to the buyer's brokerage at the time of close. Okay, so that's now entered. I'm looking for active or contingent property with the word bonus. How many do we have? I got three listings that match. Okay, let's search them. Do bonuses work? Well, I'm not sure, but within about five days after being on the market for 500 and some odd days, with this property right here, Christian and I went contingent. Why? Well, maybe, maybe, I'm not saying it's a guarantee, it's a $20,000 bonus offered to the buyer's brokerage. That's currently under contract, right? And the buyer's agent or the buyer's brokerage will get a $20,000 bonus at the time that we close, uh, scheduled to close now, um, early April, okay? So I'm not sure it works, but it did in this case. Okay, let's go back. Take a look at what else is over here. CJ Halliday's got a $1.299 million property. I want to see what CJ's offering. Uh, well, this looks like a, this is Kahaku Road. This is a, a condominium, oceanfront. This looks like a cliffs unit. Uh, I'd have to get a little bit deeper to find out. Two bedroom, two bath. Oh, this is Puapoa. A great unit. Okay, take a look at it. Active vacation rental. And then down here, agent bonus of half a percent. Okay, variable rate commission applies to buyers not represented by a real estate brokerage, and it also applies to the buyer agent bonus of 0.5%. Okay, so I don't know if that means that he's taking two and giving three or um, on a 5% commission or whether or not he's offering three and a half. Okay, I'd have to look at it a little bit closer. Okay, so that information's right there. I'd give uh, CJ a call. And then lastly, here's Kevin O'Shaughnessy. Let's see what Kevin's offering. $1.765 million property. Wow, what, what a location, huh? Look at that. Kapaa Homesteads, that's way up there. Go down a little bit further here. And as we look at the private remarks, $5,000 to buyer's boat bonus to, to, to agent, right? Has a 12,000 square foot meditation and yoga octagon. Pretty neat, okay? Lots of information there. If I do the same thing with the big on, you're gonna get a whole different thing. I'm gonna go in just for the fun of it. Let's go ahead, oh, advanced search techniques. That's what this class is, right? You see how I'm going up here every time to change these things? You don't need to do that. You can just click on this button down here. Boom, just change it. Three, hit the check mark, we're done, okay? Notice it changed automatically up above. Let's count and see how many on the Big Island, uh, we have 24 listings. Let's go ahead and take the contingents out of there. I'm gonna click on this, right? Just remove the contingents, right? You must be in the modify mode to do that, but it does work. Let's go ahead and search now. What kind of bonus could they be offering on a $29,900 piece of property? Well, let's see. Go in, make a look at the private remarks. Oh, how come I don't see the word bonus on there? Oh, here it is. Three additional unpermitted bonus rooms. That's what I was talking about. You see a lot of that on the big island. I don't know why. <laughs> there, 
As Kristen said, does that come with a bonus cease and desist too? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> My partner's a little bit hard sometimes. So Rick Shibley's got a couple of those. Uh, let's take a look over here. Let's look at this $99,000 one with Cindy Wilde over here. Right. Business and commercial property. Let's see what her says. $4,000 bonus paid to buyer's agent if property closes by three thirty one at the listing price. There's a bonus only if it sells at full price. Okay, $99,000. Go back. Let's see what else we got here. Patty Berry, what's Patty offering here? Two hundred twenty-nine thousand dollar property. The little cabin is a bonus and not permitted. Okay. I mentioned earlier that the examples in in the syllabus. Let's go ahead. I'm going to do these backwards. Going back up, right click once, lowest price, highest price, click twice to do it the other way. At 3.95, Harold Clark, Luxury Big Island Real Estate. Oh, Luxury Big Island by Harold Clark. Excuse me. I'm sorry, Harold. Go in here. Don't know him. Go in here. Oh, look at that. Nice view. Bang. Okay. $50,000 bonus to buyer's agent that brings an offer leading to a successful closing on top of the 3% commission. Right? Does that motivate anybody on the big island? That would motivate me. Uh, I'd want to go see that property right away to see if I could sell it. Oceanfront parcel, been on the market 353 days, and the bonus, no time frame on it, simply a successful closing. It just means if you close, you get a $50,000 bonus. No full place requirements, no nothing. Okay. So once again, don't let greed get the best of you, but there are ways to look for that stuff. You can also search for things like commissions higher than 3% and throw that away, right? Just go in here, simply add the field, hopefully, add field, there it comes. Got to know what your fields are called, right? Here we have the CSB, Commission of the Selling Brokerage. Ooh, let's use another Boolean indicator. How about the carrot top? Greater than three. Hit the check mark. Over three. Saw that, how that did that right away. Lots of Boolean indicators. CSB over three, right? Tax key three, active property. How many do we have? Woo, 1,816. Let's, uh, let's do 3-8. Okay, count again. 97. Search those out. Let's go from highest price to lowest price. Here's a $9 million property. Take a look at the MLS. That's a CSB 3%. I don't know why that came out as over 3. You know what? Maybe I got to be over 3. Point. Maybe that's including 3. Let me go back here. Let me just modify this. That's not good. Not good. Modify. Over three. Let's just do over three point one. Let's check it now, see what we got. Count. Now I got forty. These will be better. Now if I go in from most expensive to least expensive. Now I'm looking at seven hundred and ninety-nine thousand. Look at the MLS. 5% plus GET, okay? That makes that property a little more attractive to the realtor to show, okay? I don't know if it makes it more attractive to the buyer. 675, go down to the CSB, 4%, okay? So just remember, there's lots of ways to look for property that may be beneficial to you as an individual agent. It should never be your driving force, ever. Okay, just thought I'd throw that out there. 
When you get a list of results, how can you export without out hyperlinks? Is that in formats? I'm going to take that class. Yeah, that's in formats. Great question, Katie. Um, very simple. If I was going to take these 40 and put them into an Excel spreadsheet, uh, because it's an advanced search class, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, kind of uh, show you this real quick. Um, when you go to format here, um, you'll notice that uh, you're always, you're almost always going to want to be in a custom format to do that. Uh, in my case, I have a bunch of saved formats. Let's just take this one here. I'll use this one. Um, and then if I'm going to import that, um, when I go to the, for excuse me, when I go to the format page here, when I go to options, um, you see customer format. When I hit the download format, it automatically defaults to Excel format with active links. But if I hit the drop down menu, I just say without links. I just go to Excel format without links. I hope that answered your question. Hopefully that answered your question, Katie. Okay, did that help you? Absolutely. Uh, you spend far too much time fixing your exports, so you don't you don't want to do that. Also, a quick note about Excel spreadsheets, you guys. If you're going to do something for a client and you just want all the information taken out, like the CSV and the realtor's information and all that, just make sure that in that options area, before you click download format, you put customer format here. If you do that, all of your fields will be in customer format, and you won't have to worry about them getting information that they shouldn't have, like the CSV, for example. Right? Okay. So uh, hopefully that that is of help. Um, by the way, I'm just sending you a quick TY to clear your question mark icon off my side of the screen, Katie. Um, and so um, all that stuff's really important. Learn your formats. There is a format class. I don't teach it, but there is a format class. I think I think Andrea teaches it, but I'm not sure about that. Okay. So let's go back to MLS here. Okay, how many people we got here? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's talk about expired listings real quick. I'm going to clear all this. Okay, guys, watch this one. I'm going to look for active properties okay, on the Big Island. All right? That are going to expire next month. What? How do you do that? <laughs> right? I'm going to look at 3-8. Let's, let's be a little bit more specific here. Let's do 3-8. Let's do 3-7 and 3-8. 3-7 comma 8. Okay? I've decided, hey, I'm going to go after expired listings. 3-7 comma 8. I'm sorry. I'm going to go after um, expired listings in this area. A couple of things. Thank you for letting me know that. Uh, uh, let me clear all my recent search history. Boom. Okay. By the way, I do have ADD a little bit. I apologize. Uh, so here's all these listings. If I count them, there are um, 897 listings that are going to expire in the month of April. There's a pro problem, though. When I look at days on market, they range from nine days on market, right? Oh, these are active listings. These are currently active. There's 897 active in this area, right? I'm going to modify this, and I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to add a field, and the field is called expires. Here's the expires date. No, not the minimum expense year, the expires date. Let's try that again. And I want the expiration date to be four slash one slash 2017. You can't just put 17, by the way. I'm just going to click on that. And the maximum expired date, I want it to be April the 31st, April the 30th, 2017. Okay, and I hit the checkbox. Now, why am I looking for active properties? MLS status active that are going to expire in April. Okay, well, the reason I'm looking for active properties, I don't want contingent properties. I don't want under contract properties. Right? I don't want property that's already sold. I'm looking for property that's currently active, hasn't sold, with the hope that some of these are still going to be around on April the 1st and through the 30th, and that I can actually start writing letters. Okay? The problem is that when I search these, ninety-seven listings, right, that are available, priced from Twenty-five thousand to nineteen million five hundred thousand. They have days on the market that range from twenty-one day, oops, 
21 days to 27 to 2,792 days. So how exactly do I find out when this expires? I know they all expire in the month of April. I just don't know what day they expire. Right? In order to do that, I'll need to create a custom format. I do teach customizing later this month, um, I believe. I'll modify this. I'll, I'll look at that before we leave. So the way I do that is I have to go into a custom format. In this case, I'll just go into one of my saved formats. This expired format looks great. I'll search that now. And now I get this big, long list of expired dates. But what's really cool, remember, any place you have a heading or a subheading with a line under it, you can simply click that. On April 1st, I'll click 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You know, I've got about 10 that I'm going to send on April 1st. Right? i got a 1 on April the 2nd. i got 1 on April the 4th. i got one, 2 on April the 6th. 2 on April the 7th. 3 on April the 7th. 4 on April the 7th. Uh, 1 on April the 8th. 1 on April the 10th. 1 on April the 11th. Okay? So if I want to list this $1.35 million property on Coloco, 5 acres of land, right? if I want to look at the MLS, right? I can look at this. I know this is going to expire on April the 1st. I can go in and I can start to prepare my letter to the seller, right? Now, I'm not going to give you broker advice, but if you guys are going to go after expires, remember two things. Everybody and their dog does it. That's number one. And then number two, your broker's going to want a boilerplate disclaimer that says, hey, if this property is already listed with another brokerage for sale, this is not an attempt to list this sale. That's because this is currently a, um, um, a code of ethics violation to go after a listing that's already listed with somebody else, which means that before you go after um, Miss, Mr. or Mrs., I think that's a woman's name, the way it's spelled, but it could be a, a man, uh, after, after you talk to Stacy Mettlers, before you go after, oh, Stacy must be a man because Heather, well, not necessarily, but after you go after um, Stacy and Heather's property, okay, on Kailua-Kona that they live in currently, right, they have their $120,000 exemption, which must be the owner-occupancy exemption on the Big Island. Um, before you go after that property, you're going to want to be able to go back to your search, which you've saved, by the way. I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. You've saved this search so that you can go in, and when you look at that property, right, and you look at that MLS, you want the MLS to very clearly, on the day you send your letter, say expired right here. And you want to keep that in your file so that when... Leola calls you up and says, hey, what the hell are you doing going after my clients, Stacy and Heather? Those are my clients for years, and I don't really appreciate you going after them. You can call her back up, and you can say, Leola, I do have a printout of 602185 showing that it was expired at the time I sent my letter. Would you like me to send that to you? Okay, so make sure you protect yourself against a code of ethics violation. If you're not doing anything unethical, make sure you show that the property had actually expired. Okay? Let's go ahead and go back here. While we're talking about farming, change my format. Back to MLS. Everybody who lives in Hawaii came from somewhere, either their roots or their actual place of birth. I came here 38 years ago. I was born in New Mexico. I went to college for a little, I'm 57. I went to college for a short time in northern Idaho, and then I moved here and never looked back. Well, what if I want to go and I want to find people who live in New Mexico that own property on the Big Island? Or let's say, let's say own property. Yeah, let's say on the Big Island. I'll just pick on the Big Island. Why would I do that? Well, I'm looking for those places where I've got um, commonality, right? So we'll look in Tax Key 3. I'm going to show you a really powerful, powerful field. It's called the Tax Bill field, okay? Note all of these tax bills. You can look by city and state. You can look by country. You can look by state. You can look by street. You can look by street address, you can look by tax bill zip code, you can look by taxes. 
Well, I was raised in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I wasn't born there. I was born in the middle of the Navajo Indian Reservation, Crown Point, New Mexico. But I was raised in Santa Fe, New Mexico. If I want to find people who receive their tax bill in the city of Santa Fe, New Mexico, I simply click on this. And you spell out Santa Fe. Now, once again, for those of you that weren't in my morning class, I know that you're supposed to capitalize these things. It's just that from an old computer convention, I always put things in um, lowercase letters. And then I put NM. Okay? Well, I'll just put Santa Fe here. I'll hit the check mark. Right? Now, if I start searching just Santa Fe uh, on the Big Island, I'm probably going to get places like Santa Fe Springs, California. Let's just count and see how many we have. I've got 103 listings that match. I don't really want to look at listings, right? I'm in the wrong format. Right? I want to look at the public record. All right? I want to search these now. If I click on any one of these pieces of property, here's Fern Forest Vacation. Look at all these properties that uh, Bradford and Diane Smith own. Right? Purchased in 1993. I might actually be able to make some money on those. Right? Here we look at these. Right? They purchased a whole bunch of these for $39,000. Uh, currently valued a little bit less than that, but you just never know. Maybe they want to dump them. Who knows? Right? But if you look at this, this is Santa Fe, New Mexico. Okay? I'll go back. Okay? Let's see if I can find another one. I'll try William Glassy, executor. He's the executor for an estate, you guys. Big Island people. This is one that's probably going to be for sale. Right, currently assessed at 3300 It was purchased uh, for $0 to the estate of Margaret Glassy. Right? Uh, William Glassy, probably a husband or son, um, who uh, is the executor. Okay? This is also Santa Fe, New Mexico. Okay? There's a possibility I could find Santa Fe Springs, California in here. I'd probably, here's Mark Twain Estates. Right? Santa Fe, New Mexico. Right? So now I can write a really nice letter. Aloha, my name is John Friedman. I'm a resident of Hawaii for the last 38 years. However, I had the privilege of growing up in Santa Fe, New Mexico, where I went to uh, mid-high amongst other schools. Right? Um, I know how difficult it must be to buy, sell, or rent a property from such a large distance away. If ever I can be of assistance to you, I have 15 years of experience in the uh, real estate world. I'd be happy to assist you. Just give me a call and let me know. Okay? So it's that kind of point of interest where you can get in there. However, there's an issue, right? We have go back here. When we go back and we count these, okay, right away we'll see that we have 53 properties in tax fee 3 where the tax bill goes to the, to the city of Santa Fe. But what is the issue here? It is unethical for us to go after a property that's already listed for sale with another brokerage firm. So how do I eliminate those? I click the Modify button. I click the Add Fields button. And I write this big, fancy two-letter word, No. And you see my arrow up there, No Active Listings. Simply click on that. I check that box. Right? Click the check mark. Close this down. Make sure it shows in my recap bar down below. No. Oop. No active listings. Right? Count them again. Of those 53 properties, five are already listed for sale. Okay. So now, when I search again, here's the 48 that are not yet listed for sale. Okay. As we look down here, we see some properties, but what I don't see is the executor that we were just talking about. Okay. If you're a high dollar person, you can search, sort these by price. And you can look at what property sold for the last time it sold. Maybe you're interested in selling uh, Christopher and Patricia Webster's property on Hokulia Phase 1. Last purchase at the height of the market, November of 2006. Right? You can take a look at this particular property to see that it's currently assessed at $2,173,800. Most recently sold at 3,500,000 right. and you can take a look at that individual property. You can take the tax key if you want. Right. Simply go back, modify this, right. 
click the modify button, simply enter the entire tax key, change the format to MLS, any MLS field. See, there's Heidi saying, thanks, I'll check it out. Okay? So, you know, those things are important, right? So, I don't want her to look like she's, okay? And now as we look at this, here are the listings that were available on this property. Three and a half million sold November 1st, 2006. Since that time, it's been for sale several times. You see it at 5.6 million. You see it at 6.4 million, 6.4 million. And you see it most recently at 2.999. This is an indication that they'd be willing to take a loss. And I'm judging that by the numbers, by the way, you guys. We are a number-based system. This is the most recent listing. If you want to look at it and see what it looks like, boom, there's the home. Right? Okay. Does it look like that today? Probably not. How do you find out more about this listing? That history button, right? History on that particular property. And I'll tell you when it was released, whether there were any price changes, etc. It was released on 7-20-2011, uh, last time it was listed. Uh, it went from active to withdrawn in 2012. Okay. Um, and as you look at it here, were there any price changes? No. Okay. I don't see any price changes. Okay. So maybe that was the lowest they were willing to go at that time. Maybe they would change their mind now. Lots and lots of really good information. Okay. Don't limit yourself, you guys. The world is your oyster, right? So just some ideas of some ways in which you can do those types of searches and sales. Let's finish up today's class with a safe search. Um, I have questions, you guys, before I go any further. Got lots and lots of information here. To learn your advanced searching, remember two main things. One is that you can access information down below, right? And the other is that you can uh, change any of this information rapidly. Let's go in here. I'm looking at no active listings, tax bill, city, state, Santa Fe. Uh, I'm going to change this. I'm simply going to click on it. I'm just, uh, I'll just remove it. I'll remove it. Let's just look at a state. There is one state. Throw that thing away. How come? Modify. I'm just going to throw this thing away. I don't want to throw it away. Okay, throw it away. I'm looking for no active listings on the island of... Ha! Ah, froze this baby up. Hold on a second, guys. There it is. I look on the big island. Okay. So now I'm looking for no active listings. I mean on on Kauai. Looking for no active listings. Residential property. Maybe I'm going to be only a single family residential person. Right. On the island of Kauai. Right. Residential property. No active listings. Island of Kauai. Where the tax bill goes to Arizona. Right. Just add a field. I'll look at tax bill state. Right. Maybe I want to put uh, tax bill state, Arizona, how do you spell Arizona, A-Z, right? You have to think like the computer when it comes to I've entered that information. How many listings, no active listings in the state of Arizona, right? Now maybe I changed my letter a little bit. I'm from the southwest originally, originally from New Mexico. I always had an affection for the entire southwest region, but I found home in Kauai. I'd love to help you sell your property, and I can write that to a 104 people. If I'm writing letters, I kind of figure a dollar an envelope. Um, and so if I have to do this three times a year or four times a year to build my Arizona people, that's fine. Okay? That doesn't bother me. Money well spent to be top of mind that if they decide to sell their property, hey, where's that flyer from that Friedman guy? All right? So there you go. Okay? So here I go in. I search these property. None of these are active. Okay. These people all live in Arizona. My business partner is actually from Arizona, but I'm not. <laughs> so maybe she wants to write a little thing about how she's from Scottsdale. Um, but all of a sudden, now I've got a list of all these non-active properties. Okay. Got 104 non-active properties. Here they are. All right. All right. Some of these, these are all listings. Let's modify this. Wrong format. Go in and take a look at these in TMK. Uh, 
and search those. And here's all these properties. If I want to look at uh, when they last sold them, this is really important after the bubble burst. See these guys over here, 1986, 1993, 1996, all the way up until 2003, they should be able to make money, right? Because we've reached those points again. People who purchased at the top of the market, 2007, 8, 9, um, 2006, 7, 8, I should say, might not be able to make any money. You know, 2007, this property might be county assessed for less money than they paid for it, even though it's a high dollar amount. But if I look at somebody that paid $2 million for a piece of property, seven acres, 864 square foot, um, back in 1996, um, in, uh, Pilaw Farms, and I take a look at this, apartment A, this might have sold today. Huh. Um, but if you look at this property, and we take note, take a look at it, Again, Neil Lemon used to own it. That's kind of interesting. Right? Sold it to uh, Ernest Brown. Uh, here he is. Bought it in 2003 for zero dollars. Oh, this is 285,000 that he paid for it originally. Um, this property is worth, I can guarantee you, a lot more than that now. It's now worth 1,187,100. Okay. So Neil Lemon bought it for 1.4 million back in 1996. Okay. This guy is from Prescott, Arizona. Once again. Maybe that's that point of connection that I need being from the Southwest with them. So all that information is very, very important. Let's go ahead and go back here. Let's modify this. Last thing before we say goodbye, I want to be able to create a, um, a perpetual inventory for you guys. Let me go ahead and clear a bunch of this stuff. Wow, this thing is amazing. I, I don't know how to clear all of my searches. That's like... ridiculous um, I mean almost ridiculous okay we'll figure that out later sorry guys um, this is a brand new feature that they have now with the recent searches but they're not recent <laughs> some of these are way old okay I'm gonna go down I'm gonna click this over here uh, get rid of that I'm gonna go ahead and click get rid of all this recent history here all right. So now, um, let me modify this. I'm going to go back to an MLS format here. Get out of TMK format. And what I want to do is I want to create a perpetual inventory. In order to do that, I may end up uh, going back to the dashboard um, or simply clicking on your profile. And you want to make sure that you know your office ID number. Um, the quickest way to do that, I guess, is just to go to the dashboard type your name in, click on it, uh, click on your on yourself, and then here, you know, here's my office ID number, 6006, right? But you guys can do this for yourselves. Make sure you know your office ID number. Then what you want to do is you want to go um, into search for listings, and you want to check, take everything else out, and you want to check active, right? Contingent under contract and your my holdings I'm gonna leave my holdings off my holdings are properties that you filled out an MLS exhibit a for but that have never been released to market um, the reason I'm gonna take them off is because they're listings that I have under contract and that, or that I have uh, that I'm working and that I may not have a listing agreement yet so I'm gonna uncheck that but for your own personal use you should always check that All right and then you're gonna click the add fields tab and you're gonna say agent space O, and you're going to say agent office ID. You have two choices. You have the listing office and the selling office. You're going to check the agent office ID for the listing office. You're going to put that in here, in my case, 6006. So once again, why am I doing these particular properties? Right, as we look at it, active contingent under contract, because it's the ones with the signs on them. If they've been withdrawn, if they sold, if they're temporarily off the market, um, then they, oh you should do preview too sorry preview if you um if you if you have any of those listed um and somebody calls you and says hey John I just saw a Kauai Realty sign up there in Wailu Homesteads whose property is that you know what's the deal with that beautiful piece of property um, you just say you take this search here and you go to save search right? and then name it something. Start with a bunch of symbols, you guys. I don't care what they are. All right. Office inventory. Now, why did I say start with a bunch of um, 
symbols, you know, the Auberge or a bunch of parentheses or something. Well, the reason for that is that that will put it up towards the top of your list. And I'm going to save that search. Okay? Now, when I go into my format and I look for my saved searches, right, I'm going to go down until I find that. Uh, I should use the Auberge sign. I guess parentheses fall way lower. Hey, what happened to my search here? It's like missing. Didn't save or something. Let me try it again. Try this again. Save the search. Oh, there it is. That's it. I'm just going to save it. Save the current search as average, 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 ampersand, average, whatever you want to call it. Um, K R I inventory. So I like to use symbols on my most common searches so that I can find them. I need to clear a bunch of these out too. So now when I go to my format, I go to my save searches, I just look for all those averages, all those, uh, a bunch of them here, boom, 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 pricing structure. I got all kinds of them here. Let's find a big one. Uh, maybe, maybe it's because it's in use and I don't see it. Oh, there it is. That's my expires. That's not the one I want to use. I want to use that, uh, oh, that's a format, that's why. My saved searches are over here, I'm sorry, you guys, down here in the lower right-hand corner. So here's this, boom, 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 office inventory, and here's my one right here, office inventory that I had before here, right? I'm going to go ahead and say run now. It automatically checks everything for me. Let me do that. I'm going to clear that again, go to my saved searches, right? My saved searches, I'm going to find an office inventory that I like. In this case, I'm going to use this one up at the top with all my parentheses. I'm going to say, okay, search now. And they say, yeah, I saw that property up on Cool Mountain Road. You know, what's the deal with that? And I go in and I take a look at this and I can go by tax key, for example. I know that Cool Mountain Road is on 4-4-2. Uh, click it twice to go the other way. Right? Get all the 4 5 eight. And I go down to 4-4-2. And here's a Cool Mountain Road property. I say, oh, you know what? That is my listing with Kristen. Uh, it's currently under contract, looks like it's going to close, right, but there it is, right? Or maybe they say, hey, I saw one up in White Little Homesteads. You know what, that's Jesse Fukushima, but it is also contingent, right? Well, what do you have active in that area? Hold on a second, let me check for you. Using that modify, click on this, I remove the contingent and under contract. I just look for the active properties in that, or maybe I leave the previews up, that would be smart. I just look for the active and preview properties. Uh, then I click search now. Now I get a whole different list. If I count them, uh, my office currently has, oops, sorry, my office currently has um, 24 listings. Um, and so we take a look at this. Um, and I go down until I see something in that 4-4-1 or 4-4-2 area. Um, uh, let's click that twice. I can say, well, what we have currently active and available, uh, we have uh, um, uh, 1.73 acres available up in 4-4-4, right? Um, we've got um, uh, a Palehu property in 4-4-6 at 685,000. Uh, we have, um, and then we have some property up in Kilauea area, okay? So all of this property, very, very important to take. An area, hey, I saw a Carol Cummings sign. What is that? Go over, sort by, listed by, I go by first names. I said, well, Carol's got a couple. She's got one up in Kilauea, Pukalani Place. She's got one on Palehu Road. She's got one on Pu'uwai Road. She's, uh, right? Oh, it's that Pu'uwai Road, Road one. Oh, let me see what I can find out about that for you. It's been on the market for a little over six months, a little over seven months, um, and or right around seven months. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about it. It's a beautiful home with a very large lie, open beam ceilings. Um, it's clearly um, got a, a spacious floor plan, great decks. Um, let me uh, take a look at it and see what other information I can get for you. Uh, the photos uh, show very, very well the interior, uh, although they have uh, rather um, um, basic appliances. Um, it does um, have a nice kind of uh, uh, breakfast nook area attached to the countertop. 
it appears to have hardwood cabinets. Um, uh, big. What I don't know what happened to those photos, but um, big. Well, those, those are really uh, you know, fairly large bedrooms and bathrooms. Uh, it's a basic home in a great location. Right. Would you like to go see it? So it gives me that opportunity. We're seven minutes past the hour, you guys. I'm sorry to keep you so long, but I'm here for a while. So uh, do any of you have any questions?